Let's talk a little football. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Press Box. I'm here with a bunch of old enemies. Here we I'm go. here with Randy Young, Michael Best, Jim Rayburn. And uh, I'm certainly the oldest in spirit. I'm Austin Reeves. Uh, glad you guys could join us. You never know what's going to shake out with, with, with old enemies around a table and sitting See, here no, talking. None of us like Austin. That's, that's the true. That's well, I, yeah. that's... I, bring, I bring people together by, by hating me. I feel like that's how that goes. So, Great you know, mediator. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a unifier. I'm a unifier. I don't think that's the way it goes. <laughs> You're probably the most liked person on oh, this. Oh, gosh. On the, yeah. 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 Of the three. That, that's true. That's Except true. for the fact that me and Jim graduated from the same high school together and have a bond. The rest of you yeah, are. We have, so. we have no bond. <laughs> I promise you. Why can't I all right. bring that you together? Keep, I'm I'm just, keep trying. You I'm keep just trying. here to watch. It's all good. All right. Well, let's talk football. Let's, what we normally like to do, uh, big win, uh, just an instant classic win. Uh, Thomasville High School goes up to Harlem and uh, wins in a thriller. Let's talk about this game. Um, just, just give us a rundown, and then we'll kind of do some analysis. But go, go through it for us. Well, we started the game. We got the ball first. They kicked off, and we were they tackled us at the eight yard line, and and we run a couple plays. Then we hit Cole Shaw on the right side of the field. He runs all the way across. On the left side, he runs all the way across to the right. Goes 79 yards for a touchdown. We we stop them. Get the ball back. We're inside our inside our 10 again and, and um, hit him again on pot. Cam Hill had the best game of his career. He was 10 for 10 at one time. I think he wound up being 10 of 13. But he hits Cole on a, a deep, deep out pattern and Cole cuts across the field again. Unfortunately, he got, got down around the 30 yard line, got tackled and rolled up on and hurt his ankle and he couldn't go anymore. But we, we punched it in the end zone. And, then they began to come. They, their yeah. quarterback is probably the best one we've seen all year. He's six four. He he threw darts. He didn't mm -hmm. have a normal. He had the weirdest. Look. He had the weirdest motion I've ever seen. And they, they were if they if somebody popped open, That's he'd like, just pop it just like yeah. a dart. And and then when he ran the ball at six four, he was wiry. Yeah. We couldn't bring him down. And if he went down, he was gaining an extra four yards. And then their little running back was tough. But they came back, went down, and scored. We. We, we went up 21 to seven, they made it 21 to 14, and right at half they drove down the field and we stopped them and they lined up for a field goal and we blocked it and could have scooped and scored, but we fell on it and, and so. You just I, scooped at that time. Well, we yeah. just fell on it, we yeah. didn't scoop it, we didn't <laughs> scoop it, but A.J. Hill, the freshman, blocked it and in the ball game we hit, in the ball game went back and forth, of course it was tied at 29 and um, yeah, let's, so let's get to the end of that, tied at 29. You've, you've got the ball. Nope. Tied at 29. They've got the ball going down the field. Yeah. yeah they got late it. in the midway of the fourth quarter, they drive down inside our five, get have a third and goal at the one. And um, how much time is left about? Right probably there? four minutes left. And Kiff Parrish, the outside linebacker, steps in the hole, hits the running back, stands him up, strips him of the ball, and Joe Douglas, the middle linebacker, falls on it at the one. So now we're 99 yards away, tied at 29. And of course, Ant Davis in the, early in the fourth quarter, he went, he went 79 yards for a touchdown right up the middle, just, just broke it and outran everybody. Well, they give it to Ant in the end zone on the first play. He's caught for a safety and he breaks the tackles, gets to the five, he's caught again, spins out of it and runs it all the way to their 30 yard line. He had, he had 182 yards rushing, something like that. His best night of his career, he's a junior running back. He's, they, yeah. His name is Anthony, but they call him Ant because he's little. Yeah. He's little, but he's- He's hard to catch. He's tough, he's strong, and yeah. he gets behind those big people and they can't find him. But anyway, so then we drive it down. We run the wild, we run the wild dog several times. Can't get it in, so it's fourth down at the one yard line on the other end of the field and Coach DeLay calls a timeout, decides to put Cam back in the ball game, puts Leland Chapman as a running back, gives it to Leland and Leland dies in the end zone with 47 seconds left in the ball game to take yeah. the lead. They come out close to midfield, try a flea flicker and put it on the ground and we recover it. So that yeah. was a ball game. But that was, a, of all the places we've ever been, the people, the football players, they came back out after after the game and talked to our kids. That, that was a that was the best community I've ever seen supporting their team and the opponent's team. It was a beautiful facility. Their colors are red and black, and they're the Bulldogs too. So a dog was going to win that game yeah. either way. But it was a dog fight. Both teams, 
Both yeah. teams laid it out on the line, and thankfully the dogs had that 99-yard drive to, to seal the victory. All right, we'll talk about um, the coaching move I liked was just uh, Coach Allais just just running time off at the end of that. You know, that's that's your best defense is running that time off. With the their offense, the game. you didn't want them to have yeah. that much time left because their that's quarterback a, could throw – he could throw darts. It's a gutsy move to go for the touchdown instead of the field goal down there, though. Yeah. That's – well, you was basically saying if we don't score, it's going to probably be overtime. Right, right, yeah. right, which I get, <coughs> yeah. which I get. So, but anyway. So now you Another get... reason we, did, we didn't go for two, I mean, we didn't kick the field goal is Cole Shaw's a long snapper. He yeah. had not been uh-huh. snapping for punts because he couldn't cover. But when, when we scored a touchdown, he came back out and snapped for the extra point. But they, I don't think they were sure that he could snap. Right, and he's a right, long right, snapper. Right, so, right. anyway, that might have, that might have, went into the decision, but just one of the best games I've ever been to as far as Thomasville football. It was just back and forth, two teams hitting each other in the mouth and playing hard and getting up and helping each other up. And yep. it, was a, it was a great game, great game and big win for the dogs. It, but as George Bobo said in 1991, we might have won one too many games. Yeah, now, now <laughs> you got to go to – 1991, we go to Kendrick and get, get our eyes beat out, and he said we won one too many games. And we're going to Calvary Day, a private school with a – Quarterbacks going to Tennessee. They got a wide receiver DB going to South Carolina, and, and they hadn't been scored on since September 22nd. And that was when they basically they're, and that was against Savannah Christian something. That was their region. Fo- they beat them to win the regions in September. So anyway, hadn't played a lot of tough teams, but that don't mean they're not good. And, and we yeah. got that another long drive. Oh, and if it took as much out, of, I know it didn't take as much out of them as it did out of me, but I, I hadn't gotten over that. Four hour back and forth drive. Yeah. Yeah, eight hours. Long. Eight hours in a vehicle is too much in one day. That's a long time. All right. Was well, uh, speaking of you know long times. Been a long time. Uh, Coleman County. Long long time since they lost. They were just <laughs> that gum just tearing everybody up. Did the same thing again. Beat Parkview fifty one to twenty five. And uh, anything unexpected coming out of this? Uh, you got maybe a, a QB injury. Don't don't know any heard the quarterback, other details. Heard the quarterback was on crutches in the second half. He had pulled his hamstring, so I'm not sure if he'll play, but evidently the other one did a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so to beat a Parkview team, anytime you – you know, I know this, this isn't the normal Parkview, but anytime you beat them and get going on the road to the playoffs, you're going to be happy about that. Um, now they have Westlake at 7 p.m., so – is it, um, they're going to Westlake? Is that I correct? believe so. I believe so. Hmm. Is that how they must have won the, lost the coin toss. Lost. Maybe so. I thought that was for the third round, though. But yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. They shouldn't be facing the right. ones. No, they shouldn't. I thought they I thought they might. I think I, I, yeah, I, 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 I thought I mean, To right. all the people in Moultrie, I apologize yes. if this is incorrect, but it happens a lot. Yes. <laughs> That's all I can Sorry say. Sorry to say. It happens sometimes. It's just a typo. It right. happens several times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it look. I don't know. I think, look it I up. Don't, don't trust home. me. I think Cockwood's at home. Go, get on your phone. Yeah, go all on. right. You we, talk, we'll man. verify you're, you're right now. Right so, all right. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, instead of, as our crack research assistant's getting all that, let's talk about Cairo. Uh, you lost a close one to Troop County. Um, you know, good season, and we can, we can talk about the season. Let's get into the game a little bit, and then we'll sum up the season. Uh, two very evenly matched teams. The uh, Max Preps people, or whoever that picked the, uh, you know, uh, point spread or whatever, said it was a toss-up, and it was. It was a, a, a good game. They uh, they lost their quarterback earlier in the season, uh, and uh, the backup guy obviously did did pretty good for them. Uh, we went in with four starters gone, and uh, uh, really the, the you know big losses because they're all you know start. Yeah. I mean they're starting for a reason. And uh, so we had to do some shuffling around on the offensive line to make up for that. Now, a neat thing, uh, Cade Puckett, who uh, tore his MCL, ACL, NIL, all the L's, any L that was in there, LCL, yeah. Yeah, they were all tore. And, uh, uh, but the doctor said, it's your senior year, and if you'd like to deep snap, because he's our deep snapper, and our backup deep snapper was one of them out too, so we didn't have a deep snapper. He told him, if you'd like to deep snap, I don't see where you could tear anything else up. So, uh, Cade would limp out there and, mm. and snap up with a torn ACL, MCL, every L. And uh, he did all the deep snapping and uh, extra point uh, on the extra point, the field goal, and uh, on all the punts. So, uh, that's a warrior. Yeah, you know, that is. Come out and, that is. and do that. And he's a four-year starter. He had played in uh, 46 consecutive games 
no, in his high school career. He's a four-year starter. And mm-hmm. so the doctor, the surgeon said, listen, I don't want to break that streak. Go out there and play. He yeah. kind of like Bo Nix. Yeah. yeah. Not kidding. Cool. And uh, so uh, oh, and like the Puckett family, just a great family. The, the His mom does all of her run-through signs, been doing it for years. And I hope she'll keep that up because this is the last of the Puckets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to have to start painting them signs. That's true. I, That's I got enough to, to do. do. That's That'll be my do. next job. You don't want me to do the, the You don't want me to do the spell checking. No, no, you know, we can't have that. So. But uh, we, the game, they, they scored 14 uh, right away. We, we kind of came out a little flat, I felt like. Uh, uh, but second half, uh, I felt like we played a whole lot better. Uh, they scored uh, uh, right at the beginning of the second quarter. Then right before half, they threw a long bomb. Everybody in the place, even a couple of referees that were off duty that were up in the stands watching up in the press box, obviously push off to make the catch, and, and but referees didn't see it. So... Uh, they score, make it 14 to nothing. Second half, though, we come out. Uh, we didn't allow them very much at all in the second half. Defensively, they had two first downs. Defense came out on fire. Really did not allow them to do anything. In fact, at one point, they they uh, fake punted from their own 30-yard line trying to get something going. We stopped that. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we had two uh, touchdown passes that we couldn't wrangle in that we had and, and just couldn't couldn't get them in. Uh, and then we threw two interceptions in the end zone. Mm. Uh, so uh, heartbreaking. But, yeah. again, we just didn't execute down the stretch in the fourth quarter. We had the ball. We were down in their end of the field, you know, about the whole fourth quarter. And we one time I remember we were first and goal from the six. And then, you know, we get a holding call. Then we get a, you know, delay a game. Then we get a, you know, a, a clip. I mean, a, a, a too many men on the field. You know, just one thing after yeah. little things that kept backing us up. And we'd get it forward and we'd back yeah. up again. And so find the last play uh, of our opportunity, we threw an interception in the end zone and uh, got made a good play and stepped in front of it and uh, ended our chances uh, to to come back and, and win the game. So it was a heartbreaker mm. uh, to to not be able to advance because I felt like you know we were as good as them and uh, we just didn't execute. Down the way. Yeah. Now their their backup quarterback got hurt uh, in the game, and he had to go out. So they had their their next quarterback was number thirty one, and I, I was like, "This guy's number thirty one. He never played quarterback. We got to be able to stop him, you know." Yeah. But uh, so they were down to their third. I don't know how they'll do this week because I understand that uh, the quarterback may may have had a serious shoulder injury, and so uh, they may be down to their third quarterback yeah. when mm-hmm. they go to play Spalding. So, That's tough. Yeah. But uh, overall, looking back at the season, uh, you know, finished eight and three, made the playoffs. Um, you know, a lot of talk about the schedule and that kind of stuff. First of all, our coach, our athletic director, our principal did not make that schedule. None of those yeah. guys, people before that did that. But we're playing still basically the same teams we played in the past. I think what has been, if anything, was the two losses and the amount yeah. of the two losses for the last two seasons. Now, for me, and I don't know a whole lot about anything, I can testify to that here. Y'all know that? No argument. No Amen. argument here <laughs> no with argument. anybody. But I'm telling you, if we played Central 15 more times, we ain't going to beat them. I mean, we're just not going to beat them. I don't think Bainbridge is 50 points better than us, yeah. but I think on that night they were, yeah. and, and we've got to learn how to fight through those kind of games yeah. and not let that happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's just me, but yeah. I think that there was a lot of things happened with injuries and emotions and things that got away from us. Um, that that we didn't we got to learn how to fight and not let people get fifty points on us yeah. like that. Yeah. Now are they better than us? You know, on that night they were. Yeah. Um, when you look back at our schedule on the night we played Thomasville, I felt like on that night we were better. We won. Thomasville's a very good football team. They're still playing. Yeah. So I don't think you can take anything away from this team as far as because yeah. the word is you know well they lost to the the two best teams they play. Well, that's what everybody That happens a lot of does. times, yeah. 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 Well, what everybody usually does is you lose to the two, two best teams. It's just, you yeah. know. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, again, uh, you know, I think it was a good year. It, it was disappointing that it's over because I felt like we could have gone one more had we, you know, done what we need to do against Troop. But, uh, again, it, it was a fun year. And, uh, you know, we got to see uh, some, some good things. K.J. Spence uh, set the Russian record and did a good job with that. And, uh uh, you know, Coach Coleman's second year, uh, he's off to a pretty good start uh, as far as, uh, you know, 8-3 one year and 8-4 the other year. So, That's pretty sporty. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so congratulations to the team, and uh, we just got to look forward to next year. Keep building for next year. Yep. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, excitement in, well, that, in all I'll those programs around there. I'm, not, <laughs> it off the I'm done. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, speaking of done, how about St. Pius the 10th? Mm. They uh, – <laughs> 
their season was ended by Thomas County Central 49 to nothing. Uh, it's going to be hard to talk about this game a little bit because you guys just kind of came out and took care of business. But give me a little bit of that, and, and, and then we'll preview the Jones, Jonesboro game. Well, the first thing, when we Michael was there, uh, when they ran out on the field, I had been told they didn't have a whole lot of size. Mm. And yeah. uh, clearly whomever was watching that, Tape needs to go get their eyes checked. Or a bigger they, TV. They were, yeah, they were huge. They were, they were good looking. Golly, I mean, on the hoof. But um, when the game started, our guys, uh, they got for two first downs on their opening drive and ended up with four for the game. Uh, it was lopsided. I mean, it was 442 total yards for us, 46 for them. It was 35 to nothing at the half. Our starters played the opening series of the third quarter, went right down and scored, and then the guys off the bench came in and did really well. Uh, and again, against St. Pius' starters, that's fairly impressive. And again, I hope that type of experience will pay off sure. for them. I, mean, I think it is, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. But uh, solid performance from Central. Jalen Johnson throws for another 200 yards or so. Trent, uh, uh, Trey Brenton rushes for well over 100 uh, and a uh, touchdown or two uh, rushing the ball. So just a really solid performance. Uh, the best news of all was got out of there with nobody hurt. And uh, now we get uh, Jonesboro. Jonesboro, very athletic. Uh, they've got a receiver that's committed to uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, he's a really, really good player, uh, and he is the guy. They want to get the ball in his hands. They use him a lot like Bowers. I mean, they'll snap it to him directly. They'll do jet sweeps with him. They put him in the backfield, hand it to him, and they split it out and throw it to him. He's got about 1,300 yards receiving. But um, I'm hoping that uh, our defensive line against their offensive line will be an advantage for us. I think we've got a big quickness advantage there. Uh, but uh, hopefully, again, just take care of our business. Unfortunately, we're having some flu running through. Yeah. And uh, you don't know how that's going to affect things, and hopefully it'll be out of the system by Friday. We'll see. But, of course, that can take a lot out of you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll see. But uh, Jonesboro comes in 8-3, and three, solid team. And, uh, of course, Central uh, might be the last home game of the year. So I'm hoping our fans will come out and show up and show out. And, yeah, uh, they've been doing that. That's oh, my sure. gosh. Yeah, the fans, I mean, it is uh, – it's the first time I've been to high school games where you've got people walking around with hearing protection on over yeah. their ears because of all the – man, a lot. There's, like, horns everywhere, everywhere. And, and you know, that's against Georgia high school rules. I, not, I, not, clearly not. not I don't know what they're going to do because there's, like, They stopped Bainbridge them. from <laughs> blowing them over there in Bainbridge. That, that, I don't know what you do. I mean, again, yeah. there's a 1,000 of them. You and, start, uh, start throwing flags. Uh, they, they, I guess so. But they haven't done it yet. Yeah. Anyways, uh, should be a lot of fun. And again, uh, y'all live in a different world. Well, anyway. we're in the county, <laughs> so it's different. It, it, it is. is. It's it's get across the county line. line things and you know yeah. what is wrong with our playoff system? About three and seven teams in the playoffs, and there's a lot yeah. worse than that. There were one in. The, uh, and they had to drive yeah. from Atlanta. Yeah. Now, I mean, come on. And, and people may get hurt this round. You know. Uh, I will say know. this: the most impressive thing from St. Pius came after the game. Uh, all of their seniors, they took their entire roster. Uh, all the players that weren't seniors and everybody out of the stands, their cheerleaders and everybody, and formed a, a corridor along their sideline. And every senior player pulled their pads off and went and got hugs, handshakes from every single person. That's cool. That's what, that's what we do. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, yeah that's a nice that. touch. Of the last game. Yeah. If we're standing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's very impressive. And again, if, if Thomasville does it again, tip of the cap. I think it's a very, very classy way to handle it. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we'll see. Hopefully we take care of our business and move on. We'll see. We'll, Find out Friday. All right, moving also, moving on. Also, Pelham beat Heard County forty-one to twenty-two. They're traveling to uh, uh, Byron, Brian, Brian County, Brian, Brian County. That was a big uh, did win you, for Pelham. Did, yeah, big win for for the Hornets there. Did you figure out the uh, Coquit County? Coquit County is at home at okay. seven thirty. Against home at seven thirty. Not yeah. seven o'clock. So not seven, seven o'clock. I don't know. Where were you at? I don't know. Seven thirty. Where were you at during this? I just. It was I got so much Google going on here. Just got saying. Got so much going hey, on. Have you ever heard of Google? <laughs> <laughs> this is a newfangled thing. But yeah, they, the, the the Packers are at home seven thirty against Westlake. All right. Sorry, sorry, Packer fans. That's all right. But uh, I apologize. they're going to be they're going to be just fine. Um, uh, Brookwood's got Pinewood Christian coming into town. Uh, maybe the last question. We'll just kind of. Hit this briefly, well, no, 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 no. Explain to me how this works for Brookwood. Now, it, somebody yeah. said this is the quarterfinals already. Yeah, they don't have, um, um, you know, they they have a bye, and then so they'll start in the quarters. So wow. they, they only take the top ten teams. Well, in explain that. this to me. There's Athens Christian Academy that was playing Prince Avenue. I guess that's Gisa. 
I don't Prince think Prince Avenue's GHSA. Yeah, I think they're oh, GHSA. They are. Yeah. Well, well Ath Athens Christian Academy were o was zero and ten. Yeah, and made the playoffs, and so the coach forfeited the game. They didn't even show up. Yeah. Oh goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that that kind of stuff doesn't need to happen in the playoffs. <laughs> you know, obviously. So I don't know how I they think can they knew what out. was coming. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd seen it before. But so yeah. this is the quarterfinal round. Yeah. Then. Yes, quarterfinal. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Um, so, uh, yep, they got to, you know, stay focused and, and try to win pretty evenly matched teams. Uh, Pinewood Christian also has a good offense. so um, They do know. pretty good with them derby cars. Yeah. Pinewood. Yeah. <laughs> they do. All right. Like, what, like mm. you're going to have to explain this reference from the 60s that they have. Uh, well, if it, that's RAs. They do it. Yeah, RAs. That's, All right. that's a Baptist. That's, <laughs> that's a Baptist. Baptist. You wouldn't yeah, know. You wouldn't that's know. true. Pine, that's true. The, the Pinewood Pine Derby. Derby, Derby. Derby. Yeah. I got you. All right. Yeah. Sorry again. Folks from St. Pius. Sorry, you got to remember. He's like the podcast. Yeah, the all Baptist yeah. out there watching. Yeah. Yeah. Folks from St. Pius didn't get it either. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. We're going to do college. Yeah, I don't know how to transition out of that one. We're going to do college football in just a minute. And welcome back to the press box. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can get through without a major snafu. The <laughs> second part of this show, who knows? We'll uh, talk uh, Georgia with a big win over Ole Miss, and I had more faith in Georgia than these two Georgia fans over here. Just, We're just saying, reality people. But um, just... let's talk about Georgia in the end of the schedule. You got Bama looming. Uh, you've got Tennessee, who I thought I really thought Tennessee had a chance, but now watching them play out, I don't think they have much of a shot. Um, and then you've got Georgia Tech, and then you've got Bama. So um, do you think Kirby's going to play it a little close to the vest, kind of make sure that his, you know, maybe not play his injured guys and any reps? I mean, how, how conservative is he going to be here at the end, end of the season? I think. I, I think, as I've said, he's an evil genius. And uh, Kirby already, I mean, it's not like he thought this weekend, well, here's what I need to change. He already knows what he's doing from the beginning to the end, and he plays just well enough to win. And he does just what he has to do, and he's not going to change that. So I pretty conservative then, what you're saying, probably. Yeah, Against I mean, Tennessee, it may be closer than it actually appears kind of thing. Well, I think, too, Georgia's finally getting – the part of their offense that has been suffering this year has been in the running backs because of so many injuries. And they're finally healthy. That's it. They're finally healthy. So it would not surprise me a bit to see him want to focus on that. I think Beck has proven he can throw the ball wherever he wants it to go, and they've got receivers everywhere. But getting that running game – cemented is going to be up front and center. So, yeah, it may look like he's going conservative, but, again, there's a yeah, plan there, behind Yeah, there's a plan behind it, obviously. A so. method to his madness. Yeah. He's yeah. getting ready to go to the Big Ten where they run it all the Big Ten. So I don't think it's right. going to be like that. But, yeah. but especially, again, with Bowers, what in the world? I mean, the guy can't be just ain't human. totally human. I mean, that's just bizarre. I, was, I mean, there was talk of him playing, and I was expecting to see him kind of hobble out there and yeah. shoot, he didn't even blink. Yeah, right. that guy's uh, that's something. Superman, that guy's uh, Superman. Seriously. So uh, FSU has Bama, but that's North Alabama. So <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, uh, not probably, LA, Lower Alabama. Yeah, this is North Alabama. North Alabama. Uh, South Alabama is actually not bad, but uh, you know, uh, two playing conservative as well. Probably you mm -hmm. got two physical games coming up. Now you're going to be favored against Florida and against LSU. But uh, you got some guys banged LSU. up too. LSU. I mean, LSU. LSU. Goodness gracious. Where are they? They've already played. They've already played LSU. I'm Louisville? talking about Louisville. There we go. So, there we go. Goodness. It starts with an L. I mean, I was close. Different state. They're, they're playing in Coffee County. Two, so completely I'm different like, colors, Saturday. but you know. I tried. I tried to get through this segment without messing it up. Well, the and, only thing about yeah. FSU this past week that kind of walked off scratching your head a little bit, and I realize that Miami's defensive line is pretty sporty. Yeah, they're very good. But they lived in the backfield in that ball game. And yeah. if, if I'm an opposing team now, I'm going, okay, I think we got a recipe for causing some issues here if we can just get back there and disrupt things. Uh, but a, a big win against a rival, bottom line. Yeah, you'll Found take a way that, to win it. You'll take that win any time. I, I felt like they were very – I think they were very conservative, Did, didn't want to give Miami any turnovers or anything like mm -hmm. that. They really ran the ball. A lot of times they go for explosive plays, but really didn't do that a ton against Miami. Mm -hmm. so and they changed the rules so much. I, I can't keep up because it used to be – you used to could get a safety back in it, but I guess they yeah. and you used to that rule. You used to could Man. not hold in, in the end zone like Miami did yeah, the Miami first play against – Miami should have had a safety earlier had a safety in the ball game. You know, hard. a couple of observations. I know we're running along here, but, but a couple of things real quick. 
what is pass interference in college? Because I don't know. Nobody knows. It depends on the referee. It depends on what side of the field they're on. Hey, there's something else that hit me over the weekend. And you guys, we haven't seen many measurements in high school or college. Yeah, you got a point. You know why? They told them if it's close. They told them if it's close, just get it. Yeah, they really are. They're just. But I thought about the other night. We haven't had any timeouts for a measurement. You got a point. Do you have y'all? Yeah. I mean, nope, we yeah. haven't had many either. Of they all have, the things you've said. The, refer- all, yeah. the referees right. have got so bad at measuring, they, they, they flipped the change around. After that whole deal, yeah. they just said, no more measure. No more measurement. <laughs> You're not allowed to measure after True. that. Michael Best makes a good point on show mm, 14. Finally, so finally, finally took me yeah, yeah, like date here. 14, I finally came. Hit all me right. this weekend. Before I mess anything else up, let's, let's go to go. yes, no. Here we go. Uh, a Jimbo edition. We'll get to that at the end. But All right, Marvin Harrison Jr. should win the Heisman. He should. He's the best overall player in the country, but he won't because he's not a quarterback. You say yes, but he won't. I mean, I, I, I don't know that he's the guy, but the, a quarterback's going to win it. I mean, to Jim's yeah. point, a yeah. quarterback's he should win it. QB's going to win it. Shouldn't, I, but I, say he, I say he should. So, All right, Randy, Auburn has had a successful year. I think so. Six and four? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they've they, they kind of turned things around. Yeah. What do you, what do you say? That, they probably don't think so, but yeah, probably. Yeah. I would outside say, looking in, outside yeah, looking I would in, say yes. yes. They're they're on the upswing. I'd say yes, but if they when they lose to Alabama, they're gonna say no. Yeah. You're right. All right. You're right. You get you can't judge it by Is a Bruno rebuilding still by. There? He's not there. He's not there. He's in year he's thirteen of that contract. Is what Jim's talking about. Thirteen years. <laughs> All right, Michael Best is for you. SEC Homer Paul Feinbaum talking about Harbaugh's character is hilarious. <laughs> that whole thing, man. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say yes. That it is, is hilarious. It is. It, it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, I don't listen to Feinbaum. I may have to because he's SEC, but I'm oh not SEC. Gosh. I'm not SEC. Just yeah, don't judge not. everybody in the SEC by well, some of the phone calls yeah. you're going to hear, Jim Rayburn. I'm just it's warning you right now. It's very entertaining. Holy moly. It's very mm. entertaining, um, but it, it does. Mm. Uh, He's got bigger ears than any Rayburn I've ever seen. <laughs> like a 57 Ford truck coming down the road. Yeah. Both doors open. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, but anyway, if you're uh, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. And so to hear uh, Paul Feinbaum get uh, you know clutch his pearls about uh, Jim Harbaugh is hilarious. By the way, so anyway, uh, that was a whole weird situation about that. So let's go into uh, the last couple of questions here. Obviously, Jimbo Fisher was paid seventy six million dollars to walk away from coaching. I think I could do that. Mm-hmm. I can but, do uh, that. I yeah. can handle that. So uh, you know. As uh, those of you who are connected to FSU will appreciate this question, but Randy, uh, Jimbo needed better facilities. He needed better facilities. <laughs> Clearly, that was the issue. So that was Clearly, the issue. that was what was wrong. Yes. Yeah, you needed. Uh, that was one of the reasons why he, he walked away from Florida State. Yeah. Uh, stated, so. well, that was one of the reasons. So yeah. A couple others. <laughs> There's a couple <laughs> other ones. Yeah. Um, yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes. You say yes. yes. I say yes, and he must need a better personality. I think he has a hard time getting good assistance. And yeah, I mean, the coaches are the key to that. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know being able to get along with people is a big deal. You know, it's, it's kind of that hard part of your uh, hard charger, and you believe in yourself and you believe in your system, but you got to get along with people that's too. Right. And that, that's not easy. Well, and you also have to have a generational quarterback to be able to win if you're that, that, So that that helps. That I mean, does that, help. The Johnson helps. kid was not bad yeah. in high school, and his brother too, but they're just not the generational. Have people. not been developed. Right, right. Now. right. Yeah. He yeah. hadn't developed. He no didn't bad. develop anybody at FSU. No, they had it. When he they had Jameis Win- Winston, yeah, who was just a. He was a generational yep. college yep. quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He was yep. very good. Now he did. He developed. You know, probably Ponder and uh, E.J. Manuel. Okay, but you're right. It definitely stood out with Jameis Winston. And that's there, where so. he got his name established with, with Jameis. Yeah. It yep. wasn't with Ponder and Manuel. All right, last one, uh, Jimbo. I'll, do, I'll, I'll go with you, Jim. I'm Jimbo. All right, you're, Jimbo, yeah, Jimbo. Jimbo is better at self awareness than Texas A&M. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So yeah. your Texas A&M, you, you pour in a ton of money over the years. I mean, they should have won a national title not since 1938, I believe. I mean, when you pour that kind of money and resources in, you should have won something. Yep. Um, so there's the something West. there. I don't know what it is. You're asking a Texas there. fan about Texas A&M. So I'm, a, I'm asking a Texas A&M fan the, about Texas, Texas A&M has a yellow streak because they quit playing Texas. They yeah. would, but 
it's going to be interesting if the SEC makes them play each other. Oh, yeah, they, they should. They better. Texas a m does not want to play Texas. Yeah. They, they should play each other because of the history. That's of, right. Uh, it was a, a, one of the biggest awesome things. It was always on Thanksgiving weekend, a great yeah. series. One of those games I always look forward to. Yep. So, you say Jimbo's, yes, Johnny he's better. Yes. He's better than, he may be. I don't know. Lance L, Johnny Football. Johnny yeah. Football. All right. Uh, he, uh, Jimbo clearly. better at self-awareness than a Yes, A&M. clearly. All right. You say yes? Yes. All right. Well, maybe they'll figure it out. You agree? The, I, I say yes, but both of those entities need to work at that. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. But mm-hmm. don't we all? And I need to work on my broadcasting. So <laughs> I'll do it next week. We'll see you. We'll try to do box. better next time. <laughs>